Okay, so in the last section, Sean gave a great runtime speed up to the multiple pattern matching algorithm that we presented using a try. Um, but along the way, he completely forgot about memory. So here's the try that we were working with for the patterns that we had. And uh, you can verify that the number of edges in this try is approximately equal to the total length of combined length of all our patterns. And in fact, in the worst case, the number of edges in this, in this try are going to be big O of the t combined length of all patterns. And this is not necessarily great because uh, the, pat the t combined length of patterns may be 40 or 50 times the, the length of the genome. So that's a huge amount of memory that we're going to have to use. So the question would be, rather than processing the uh, patterns into a data structure, can we instead flip this uh, around and say, can we process the genome into a data structure? If this data structure used big O of the length of genome, then that would be a, a huge memory reduction. And so Sean was talking about um, the idea of putting all the patterns into a data structure that he thought about as a bus. So we could move this bus down the genome in one pass, and all the patterns could get off when they found a match. And so to do this data structure that, um, where we, we process the genome as a data structure instead, what we're thinking about is we're going to ask each pattern, where is it that you want to go? Okay, And we're going to take the pattern straight there. So we're going to essentially fold up the road itself, fold up the genome, and say, um, and take it to the patterns. Okay, And so the analogy I thought there is if each pattern is going to the precise location in the genome that it needs to go, well, this is a transporter, right? Okay, So uh, all nerdiness aside, here's what we're going to do. We're going to form all suffixes of our genome. And then the question would be, how is it that we combine these suffixes into a data structure? The one that we've seen is a try. Okay? Um, and you may be curious, why is it that we're forming all suffixes of genome? But just bear with me for a second, and you'll see. OK, so for example, consider this hypothetical genome, Panama bananas. And to form the suffix try for it, um, notice first that I've added a dollar sign to the end of the string. All right, this, you can just think of this as a notational thing. It's important for a number of reasons that, we'll, that uh, would come up through the course of this lecture. But from now on, we'll just assume that when we're working with the genome, we add a dollar sign to denote the end of the string. Um, it'll, sh it'll tell us that when we've hit the end of the string so that we'll know that we've had a suffix. So we add Panama bananas to the suffix try. Then the next suffix is Anima bananas. We add it to the try. Then Nama bananas and so on. And then we, s we encounter Ama bananas and it starts with an A, which is the same as another suffix. Uh, and so we start threading it into the tree and so on. All right, so we create this suffix try. In practice, you'd probably go from shorter suffixes to longer suffixes, but I've gone the other direction. Um, and then we have the completed suffix try. Now, if it looks uh, big, hold that thought for a minute, right? because it does look very big. But now we have a data structure that uh, has to do with just the genome. Right? We don't have to process the patterns into a, into a data structure. We have a data structure that's only on the genome. So then we say, how do we use the suffix try for pattern matching? It may not be clear how it is that it's going to help us. And what we'll do is remember that when we uh, used the try before, we said, at each position of the genome, is it possible to spell down a pattern from the root to a leaf of the try? In this case, what we're going to say is, let's take each pattern and see if we can spell out uh, that pattern from the root downward to a, in the suffix try. OK, so here's an example. Here's the pattern banana. And we know that that occurs in Panama bananas. And if we start at the root, then we go to B. And we can spell it down this path. And we see that we spell out the entire string banana uh, and end at this node. So what that tells us is we were able to spell it out in the suffix try. And that means that it must be a pattern match. OK? Nab is a pattern that we know doesn't occur in Panama bananas. We can match the first two letters following this path, but we're unable to match the third letter. Okay. Antenna is another pattern that we know doesn't occur. We can match the first two letters, but again, not the third. And Nana is one that we know ap appears once. So we get to Na, and then we walk down the path Na to match Nana. All right, so you see that the suffix try is, is working for us. But the question would be then, where is it that these matches are? We're able to identify that. Um, if you go back to Nana, we're able to say it occurs in the string. But this does not presently give us any information about where that match occurred in the string. 
So to find where these pattern matches are, we're going to need a, to add a little bit more information to the suffix tri that we have. At le each leaf of the tree, what, of the tri, what we're going to do is we'll add the starting position of the uh, suffix that whose path ends at that leaf. So when we walk down the suffix to a leaf, we'll add the position at the leaf where the suffix originally started in the genome. So for example, if we come back to our tri for Panama bananas, uh, then the entire uh, string is a suffix. And it starts at position 0. So here is the path from the root to a leaf that corresponds to that suffix. So we put a 0 at that leaf. For Anamon bananas, here is the path that ends at that leaf. And so we label it with 1, which is the starting position of that suffix. And so we find each path through the genome, or through the tri, corresponding to a suffix and label it with subsequent integers. So 2, 3, 4, et cetera. OK, and so we can go through and do all this. So now we've added this information. So the question is, how is it that this information is going to help us? Well, once we've found a match, we're simply going to walk down to the leaf to find out what the position of that match was. OK, so for example, if we come back to banana, all right, we've found that banana is a match. And so we simply walk down the remaining two nodes to the leaf and see that that is at starting position 6. The suffix starting with banana was at starting position 6. So banana must be at starting position 6. All right? Another example would be A and A. This occurs in three different places in Panama bananas. And so when we found the match, we're, not, we're nowhere near a leaf yet. In fact, we're at a node that branches. Okay, and so to find the starting, po the starting position of all matches of A and A, we need to walk down each of these three uh, paths to a leaf. So if we walk down this path, we get starting position 1. If we walk down this path, we get starting position 7. And if we walk down this path, we get, path, we get starting position 9. So it tells us that we have three starting positions, 1, 7, and 9. Notice that 7 and 9, the occurrence of A and A overlaps. Okay, and this information tells us exactly where those patterns matched. The issue, though, would be that you may have noticed that the suffix tri is bigger than the, the uh, original tri that we had for the patterns. And in fact, in general, it's going to be larger. In a worst case, it holds uh, the combined length of all suffixes. But the problem is that if the genome has length n, the combined length of suffixes is equal to n times n minus 1 over 2. And that term is big O of n squared. So we're dealing with something that's now quadratic in the length of genome. And this is not going to be practical for a real genome. I still think we've got a good idea, though. And so um, what we'll do is compress the tree a little bit. So we will take the suffix tri and compress the information that's stored in it. And maybe we get something that is a lot smaller. So the way that we'll do this is we're going to take each non-branching path of the tree. So if we see a path that doesn't split at all, then we are going to be able to compress that into one edge that represents the string along that path. So if we come back to our suffix tri, here is um, a non-branching path. Notice it does not branch. Okay, um, And we can compress this into just a single uh, edge that's labeled with bananas which was what was labeled on this path. Okay? And so we can do this for every uh, non-branching path in the, in the suffix tri. Here is ma bananas, and we can press it into an edge, and so on. Now, if you were implementing this in a, in a real program, you would probably use pointers instead of storing all these strings, which would, be, uh, which would still consume a lot of memory. Um, but you'll notice as we go through and we do this compression, just visually, you can see how much smaller it's making this example suffix try. And we have one more compression, and we're done. So it's much smaller. And then the question, it, this data structure is going to be called a suffix tree. OK, so we move from a suffix try to a suffix tree. And the natural question would be, exactly how much memory does this suffix tree hold in general? We know that it's clearly getting smaller, but maybe this is just some example. Um, for any genome that you would consider, the number of nodes is actually going to be in the suffix tree will be less than two times the length of the genome. And that's going to be big O of genome. And if you want to see why this is, um, notice that the number of leaves is equal to the length of the genome. Why is that? Well, it's because each path uh, from the root to a leaf corresponds to a unique suffix. 
And because of that, um, there are uh, length of genome suffixes. So each, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the leaves in the suffix tree and the suffixes of the genome. And so there's a, the number of leaves is equal to the length of the genome. What about these internal nodes? Well, it can be shown that the number of internal nodes is always um, uh, less than uh, the length of the genome. So this is going to give us that uh, the combined number of nodes is always less than two times the length of the genome. So we've now moved from something that's quadratic, whose memory is quadratic in the length of the genome, to something whose uh, memory is linear in the length of the genome. So this compression has done a lot for us, and it's what we've wanted to do. Again, I'll reiterate, we, uh, we had a suffix try and we had quadratic uh, memory. The issue would be that now uh, we have a suffix try and we have to create it before we can compress into our suffix tree. And so if we're not able to go directly to our suffix tree, then we still have a problem because we're consuming a lot of memory along the way, even though the memory that we have in the long run is smaller. Um, fortunately, though, it turns out that there are like really uh, magical, crazy algorithms uh, that you can look up uh, that will be able to um, take you directly to the suffix tree, and we'll do so in uh, runtime and memory that are both linear in the length of genome. So we don't have to worry about going through the suffix tree first. We can go straight to the suffix tree. And so this gives us a total runtime and memory of using the suffix tree of big O of the length of genome plus the combined length of patterns. And so I think I've offered a big improvement over what Sean was doing.